uh, our youth demographic, especially in the ages of uh, 16 to 26, uh, is not keeping up with the rest of the world in terms of educational attainment. We're falling behind. I think by the OECD rankings, we've fallen in the last five years from a ranking of somewhere around four or five to around 20. So we have an entire generation that is falling behind in terms of educational attainment. Uh, these organizations want to be able to make it absolutely clear uh, to as many different people as possible uh, what that issue looks like. And what I'm going to show you uh, is uh, an example for a particular metric, which is educational attainment in the United States, as we go through this quick tour. What you're seeing here is educational attainment over time in the U.S., high school graduation, <clears throat> and I'm now going to break this down by ethnicity. So what you see here is uh, white and uh, black high school graduation rates converging over about a 40-year uh, period, and Hispanic graduation rates plateauing. There are literally tens of thousands of organizations out there trying to move this needle, this blue line at the bottom. The important thing about this is it's not a needle, it's in a report somewhere. It's, we're trying to create a, space, a, 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 a place on the web where this can be shared and syndicated to tens of thousands of people, tens of thousands of organizations that are all trying to move this needle, that can break it down by their geographic location wherever possible, and to show whether they're moving their piece of this needle so that more and more eyeballs can be on the same sets of members and stakeholder groups and ecosystems can be aligned around common objectives. That's what the foundations and nonprofit organizations and civil society organizations that are working with us, that's their vision <clears throat> for how the state of the USA can make a difference by aligning these, creating this tremendous leverage of information around stakeholder groups. And as I sat at a cocktail party with a very successful superintendent of schools in the United States and asked him, what difference would this make to you on the ground? He said, I'm trying to get parents and stakeholder groups and healthcare organizations all to get organized around cheap uh, results. Now, in the health arena, which uh, many of you know I, uh, or may know, that <coughs> the health system in the United States is uh, very much broken. And in this uh, presidential election, it was a significant issue. Uh, as the transition period occurs in the United States, health reform is going to be squarely on the agenda from day one. Uh, and what are we doing about that? Well, we've just commissioned a report, which will be out this week from the National Academy of Sciences, to choose 20 health measures by which American people ought to assess the progress of the country in health. We commissioned that, and it'll be, I think, a signal contribution to the field. Then the question is getting data up on the web that would show uh, how we're doing in health and I'll give you just a couple of examples of what we think this would mean. Uh, the first example I'll give is using an, uh, an IBM technology uh, called ManyEyes. And ManyEyes is an open source technology. It's available for all of you to use right now. You can upload data uh, to this technology and, uh, and then uh, use these statistical visualizations. There's an entire field of innovations taking place in making data more easy to visualize, more accessible for a larger variety of people uh, in terms of visualizing statistics and visualizing numbers in ways that are easier to use. And this is just one of those many different technologies. What you'll see here is a map of the United States. And this shows the percentage of adults without health insurance coverage during a period 2004 to 2006. So Texas, 30% uh, without health care coverage. Uh, Montana, 22%. As we start to dig below the averages and look at this data, let's take a look at two different worlds. One world, the world at the top map, is going to be breaking this down by Hispanics that don't have health care coverage. The other world, is going to be non-Hispanic whites. So if we take one of the states right now that is a model, or put forward as a model for healthcare reform uh, in the United States, and look at Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, uh, non-Hispanic whites, 8% of non-Hispanic whites don't have health insurance. 
in Massachusetts, 31% of Hispanics go to health insurance. That's a needle that's going to have to move. That's a needle that's going to play into the politics and into the solutions and how this works on a day-to-day -day basis for demographic populations throughout the states. And it's an example of how quickly, with five or six or seven clicks, you can start to get engaged in real information that affects policy debates. And one of our goals at the State of USA is to get these economies of scale by using information in front of uh, a wide variety of citizens uh, as quickly as possible. And I'll give you one example of another technology, uh, which is a Google-based technology uh, called uh, Trendalyzer, uh, and a different view of the United States healthcare system compared to other countries, as opposed to state-to-state -state comparisons. All of these statistical visualizations depend on operating off of good quality data. So we pay a lot of attention to that. This, uh, is, uh, this particular demonstration operates off of OECD data. And what you'll see here uh, is the ability to look at uh, different countries represented by these different circles uh, over time. And so I'm going to take here an input measure, uh, which I'll pick total health expenditure per capita. And then I'm going to pick an outcome measure, life expectancy at birth, and show you a story of the United States, which we'll track over time. As it starts with a group of other countries in the 60s at an approximately the same level of per capita health care expenditure and rises to a rate almost triple that of Great Britain uh, in terms of per capita health care expenditure while life expectancy stay roughly normal. And as much as people talk about it and read about it in the newspaper, when you put this in front of a member of Congress or a member or, or, or any citizen, their level of emotion rises significantly when they look at this kind of a comparison. Uh, it all drives off of good data, but the visualization is a significant component. These are also all open source technologies. They're available to anybody who wants to use them. Uh, one of the things that we can do to help them, to help people understand uh, issues like the deficit uh, and make numbers more interesting and available to citizens is create uh, micro-tutorials like this one that take just a couple of days to design uh, and a couple of hours to code in Flash or Flex uh, to show some perspective on what the government spends, where the money comes from, uh, how you construct the deficit, and ultimately the need to look at that, those deficit numbers as a percentage of GDP over time, uh, what those adjusted numbers look like, where the debt comes from to finance the deficit, and who owns that debt. Now this is an example of a much more complex issue. Uh, it's not as easy to get on one particular chart, uh, but uh, there's, there are still ways to make it come to life very quickly. So I'm gonna go to another example of the, uh, the many eyes technology and just look at one simple fact, which is uh, who holds the United States debt. Now if we look in 2000, who held the United States debt. Japan was the largest debt holder with 31% of US debt. China, at the time, held 5%. If I go to 2006, China now holds 18% of US debt. And if I just highlight all the Asian countries that hold U.S. debt, 58%. That's a number <laughs> that, that, that scares people. Other people, they're not quite sure what to make of it. But what this shows is a way to make very, very real, very fast some of the issues that we're facing and dealing with, uh, with our, our economy in the United States.